In my recent newspaper interview, I suggested that money might be flowing into Asian markets, especially those oversold markets like Singapore, Hong Kong and China. Well, I don't have concrete data for you, but in this video, I'll back it up with reasons why I think that we should be looking into, for example, the Singapore market with evidence from STI, the Straits Times Index. Let's talk about the top 10 constituents of the STI Index as of 31st of Jan 2024. The three banks, it's about 46% in terms of weightage. And then we have the next category, which would be Singtel. All right, so that's about 6%, followed by the two REITs. The two REITs uh, took about 7% here. Now, why do I want to mention all this? Because uh, these companies are high dividends. Okay, for example, DBS has 5.9% in terms of dividend yield, OCBC 6.2%, and UOB 5.67%. If you take a look into for example, Capital Land Ascender REITs, uh, it's giving about 5.5% and Capital Land Integrated Commercial Trust, that's about 5.4% uh, per annum. So averaged, we have about STI component stocks giving plus minus about 5% and towards the high of 5%, right? Not all of them, but I just want to bring out that at least we have 50 plus percent of the uh, component stocks, right? Giving an average yield of more than 5%. Now to STI chart for the past five years, you can see that it doesn't overperform the US indexes, but it's in a very nice tradable range. That means that there's a fixed range here. You will expect the support for STI to be around here. So that's about 3000 and the key resistance for STI about 3004. Uh, the sub levels for STI is about 3001 and the sub Resistance level for STI is about 3,003. Now, what does this mean here? Say, for example, if you have a portfolio and you are there to collect dividends, with an average dividend of about 5%, then a trading strategy would be to buy near to 3,000 and to sell when it's near to 3,004. Okay, so if we take the sub range, then we can refine the strategy to say that we can buy near to 3,100 and sell near to 3,300. All right, what you get would be along the way that is moving. If you manage to buy near to the low of the range, then you do get some form of an appreciation uh, towards if price is to move to 3,300 and three, or 3,004. Along the way, you get dividend you. All right, of about 5%, average 5%. Investors looking at slightly longer term investment and you don't want to stock pick, then you might want to consider the two ETF that's listed in Singapore Exchange. The first one would be this code ES3 and that's under State Street Corp. All right, so let's take a look at some of the fundamental data of State Street Corp. Uh, so the asset under management would be 1.46 billion with a dividend yield of about 4.64 and as well as expense ratio about 0 0.3. So these are essentially the three things I look for in a fund. The second one would be Nico AMSTI and this is the chart here. You can find that they really, really follows very closely to the movement of STI. Sometimes the chart would, would look a little bit different the, the ETF gives out actually dividends but you know if you look at for example Nico AM then a support would be somewhere around here and, and we are actually near that support right so for ES3 as well the State Street Corp they just given out the dividends around mid Fed all right and then the support would be somewhere around here so you know it's it's very similar to the charts of STI Right, in terms of uh, Nico AM, the asset under management is about 691 million. It's uh, lesser, much lesser than uh, ES3. Uh, Dividend U is about 4.5 with the expense ratio of 0 0.3. So these uh, statistics, they are about the same. The Dividend U about the same and expense ratio about the same, but the asset management would be slightly different. Going back into the reason why I am bullish about STI or I would want to consider the STI as my portfolio for 2024 and that's because we have two uh, very important things here right first would be that Fed is going to cut rate in 2024 
However, the second thing is that Fed might not be able to cut as many times or as much as what the market wanted. So let's take a look at the first setting. Fed is going to cut rate and then what is what, which sector is going to benefit? It's going to benefit the REIT sector, which is Singapore REITs. And at this time here, a lot of SG REITs, they are paying about 5% dividend yield already. Now, second argument would be Fed is not going to cut as many times as what the market is expecting. Then which sector is going to benefit from this? And that would be the banks. And we are talking about that banks is actually paying a dividend yield of about more than 5% already. So in this case here, yeah, STF would be having the best of both worlds, isn't it? We have one sector where is still going to benefit from the slightly higher rates, especially when Fed might not be likely going to cut as many times as what the market is expecting. And if it really cuts, then which would be the sector that was oversold? attractive valuation of course then we are not talking about a huge appreciation at this moment because we still have a high interest rate at this moment and this is going to stress on the REITs but in terms of financial setting we are talking about which sector is going to recover and I think that this which is a possible rate cut it's going to benefit the REITs which is the S3 REITs and already paying about 5% dividend yield. So it's all about selecting uh, properly and selecting carefully which are the REITs that you want to invest in. So if you don't want to select, then the best proposition would be to go for STR ETF. Let me know what you think about what I've just said. And if you do have other comments, let me know in the comment section. And if you want me to talk about any other sectors, let me know. I'll be very happy to go through them.